bless you, we magnify you, we glorify your name, we lift your name on high, and we just say you are high and high and high. You are Adonai, Elohim. Shabagado sandarabagadai. Roshabagando seke brekatara bashanda. We worship you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap offering. We thank the Lord for gathering us here, brothers and sisters. Thank you, worship team. I want to thank everybody that has joined us, uh, people joining us from Nairobi, uh, Kenya, the city in the sun, uh, those joining us from Africa, Australia, Asia, America, Latin America, uh, you are all most welcome uh, to this online uh, lunch hour service. And um, I want to encourage you, please, to share our page. Invite your friends to be, to you know, to to to, to log in so that they can. They can watch and uh, be blessed. Don't get, ble don't get blessed alone, you know. Uh, churches are now mostly online, and so we thank God for the technology. Um, I want to encourage us to, tomorrow we are going to be having a prayer clinic. Uh, it's basically, we're going to be praying for, uh, praying for families, praying for people, and that is going to be from 4 o'clock Kenyan time. And that will go on like up to 5.30. Well, about one and a half hours. We're going to, you know, it's focused on just uh, the, 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 the power of prayer. Discussing on prayer, but uh, praying for your prayer requests. Uh, so I want to request you to send all your prayer requests. Uh, child of God, there is nothing as powerful as uh, two or three people gathering together to pray and agreeing with you. There is multiplication of power in the realm of the spirit. And things that would have taken you five years can be shifted in one prayer meeting. So uh, please write your prayer requests. If some of them are so private, you don't want us to know your name, it's all right. Just send us. We want to we wanna, we wanna stand with you uh, in prayer. Okay. Uh, this evening, we're going to be having our youth, uh, our youth service, and uh, we're going to be discussing on uh, sexuality, a very, very important subject. So please don't miss out. It is going to, going to, going to be so, so, so powerful. Uh, you know, we're going to be having Pastor Terry Shundu with us as well. So it's going to be good. So I want to invite uh, those who are here. I can see Victorious, De Guzman, Muni, Sundra, Miresia, Franklin, uh, Roslyn Acheng, uh, Purity Kamau, Millicent Osewe, Anyango Susan, and uh, Evelyn Thien, Catherine Rajo, Joel Munene, Martin Chamwada, Moses Mbewe, uh, Inglin, Kamau, Mugure Mary, you know, uh, many people, Christine Mbweri, and all the others, Maria John, uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Dorothy Chin, Vashumathi Balan. Okay. Um, we want to Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee. Could this be my friend from South Korea? Mama Sarah Lee, I don't know. Uh, Sandara. Okay. Let's uh, go to the Word of God and see what the Lord is telling us this week. For the next three days, I'm going to be sharing on... Um, conquering the Babylonian Empire. We are going to, I'm going to be sharing very serious stuff on uh, how, uh, you know, yesterday I shared with us and I, I spoke about the God of battles. Uh, I want to share, I feel so much inspired. I'm just coming from a pastor's meeting. Uh, we, we've had a wonderful, wonderful time at Bishop uh, Kuna's place. Uh, just praying for our nation. Uh, we gather as uh, apostles and prophets to just agree and pray for this country that we love so, so, so much and uh, for the nations. So, uh, I want us to go to the book of uh, Genesis chapter 10 and verse 8 to 9. The Bible says, And Cush begat Nimrod, 
and he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Uh, when we are looking at the Babylonian system, we are looking at a system that is controlling the entire world. It is controlling the, the political system. It is controlling the resources. This uh, Babylonian system is a system that is controlling resources, finances, controlling jobs. Uh, it is a system which is felt in every country, in every city, everywhere. Actually, everybody that is working in the marketplace, you are working within a Babylonian system. And many times, uh, believers, even those people who are doing business, you know, uh, the reason why children of God are not prevailing, I mean, they are, they are not having, they are not succeeding as much as they are supposed to succeed and having impact is because we are working in a system and our failure to understand that we are working in a system called Babylon and the things that we need to know in order to break through in Babylon, uh, many people don't have understanding about that. So you find that you're a child of God, you're born again, you're working in this company, you are righteous, you are holy, you work so hard, you are honest, you work in integrity, but you just cannot make it. You cannot prosper. You cannot be promoted. Uh, uh, the wicked get promoted because it, they are working in that system. They understand how the system works. And the Babylonian system wants you as a child of God to conform to that system. Even people that are doing business are business people. You find that most business uh, Christian businessmen and business women are mostly average, you know. Uh, most of the companies that are calling the shots in the stock exchange and in every nation, you find that these are actually run by the wicked. You know, there are very few righteous people that have excelled to the peak of that particular sphere, whether it is media, whether it is business, whether it is politics, and even I have seen politicians because I love working. I work with politicians. I love politi politics so much. One time I was in politics. Uh, politicians getting into uh, government, we pray for them. They get into government. They love the Lord so much. Uh, um, and we have a lot of hope that this uh, person is born again. He speaks in tongues. We used to fast with this person and so on. So they are, God is going to use them to bring about change. And when they get into the system, the system swallows them up. And then uh, you realize that they are now compromising. They are engaged in corrupt, uh, corruption cartels and so on and so on. And so uh, why is it like that? And many times we don't understand. Well, you know, so and so was good before he got into politics. What happened to them? It's because of the Babylonian system. I mean, this system is a very, very, very powerful system. You know, it is felt everywhere. And uh, this is the system that has kept more, many people poor. Many people cannot excel in the marketplace. They are born again, but they can't excel. So we are going to confront that uh, Babylonian system in the name of Jesus as we share the word of God. So... Uh, we are introduced to a gentleman called uh, Nimrod. You know, Nimrod, uh, whose father was Cush. The scripture describes him as a man that was a powerful hunter. He was very powerful as a hunter. But it was not just that uh, Nimrod was a hunter of animals. No, he was a wicked man. He was a wicked man that had an ambition to control the entire world. It is Nimrod that began the building of the Tower of Babel. Actually, their initial vision was to build a city, but in that city have a tower that would reach out to heaven. And the whole plan was 
uh, to bring all the, 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 the peoples of the earth together because at that time people were speaking one language so that Nimrod can be able to control them. Uh, look at Genesis chapter 10 and verse 10. The Bible says, And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalne, in the land of Shina. You know? Uh, the, 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 the word Babylon comes from there. It comes from, you know, from Babel. And uh, that idea, that ambition of wanting to have a, a, a one world government to bring the entire world under the control of a few people that call the shots and make policies and determine what nations should follow has never been lost. The devil is trying to resurrect that system where uh, we are seeing nations trying to come together, especially through the European Union, you know, trying to, to form up a powerful uh, uh, a powerful one, one, one world government. And even here in Africa, we feel it so much. You know, we are independent. In Kenya, we are independent. Uganda is independent. But it, you, you can feel the impact of that where they tell you that uh, you have to allow abortion in your country. And you say, no, for us, we don't allow abortion. And then they, they, they'll begin to say, we are not going to give you money. We're not going to give you money for schools and so on. Uh, you have to give the homosexuals a freedom of expression. It must be put in the Constitution. You know, when, when we, we say uh, against that as African people, they say that we are primitive. And there's a lot of uh, intimidation are coming from this. I want to thank God for what God is doing for raising up men like uh, Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump, you know, I, I know that the people who are watching me, you don't love Donald Trump and you disagree with the way he talks. Uh, some people say that the guy is not handsome and so on. But I want to tell you, I love Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump is a man that God is using in this hour to, you know, to delay even this thing of the formation of the world government. Even the, the, the British exit is a very, very strategic thing from the heart of God to ensure that Britain does not remain in the European Union. So, I mean, as we are praying, God is also working, dismantling the world government. I know that according to the prophetic um, uh, to, to, to prophecy, one time uh, the, the, the world government is going to come in, but the devil wants to take us there before the timing. Remember, we looked at that scripture in the book of Daniel chapter 7 where we say that the devil is going to try to change the times and even change the laws. You know? So, that, that ambition in leaders of wanting to control, I remember even when uh, President Barack Obama came here. He was trying to, uh, you know, to, 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 to speak and say, you know, homosexuality, they should be given freedom of expression. I thank God for our president, His Excellency, Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta, because, you know, in a press conference, you know, you say that is not important for us as the people of Kenya. We have more pressing issues. So, Babylon is a system where a few people gather power together and then they oppress the weak. So this is uh, uh, what Nimrod intended by building the Tower of Babel. You know? And uh, uh, glory to God that God would not allow them to reach that level. Remember what, what the conversation that God said, you know, uh, because these people were speaking one language, God decided to scatter them uh, by giving them different languages so that they could not agree together. And actually, when you look at the conflict of nations that is taking place right now, uh, some of this conflict is to delay certain agendas that the devil wanted to bring to us. Okay, so when it comes to the issue of, uh, for example, issue of resources, you know, you, you find that... Um, uh, the Babylonian system, because it is a system of power concentration, resource concentration, in the hands of a few people that should use those resources and use that power to exploit, to afflict the masses. You find this 
operating in every nation where you, you, you find that uh, money, resources are in the hands of a very, very, very small minority. Very few people own, in some nations, you find that 10% of the, the people own 80% of the wealth of the nation. And the rest of the people are left to just fight for, as you know, like paupers for, for, for the 20%. I can tell you, child of God, the world is no longer poor. The world is no longer poor. Poverty that we are having today is a man-made poverty. Because when you are poor, you don't have rights. If you're poor, you don't have... Um, you, 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 you cannot fight against the expression. Just look at this. Bill Gates, one of the richest men in the world. The last time, I just checked this morning when I was, uh, 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 you know, he's uh, worth $104 billion. Now, remember, the world has 7.5 billion people. Bill Gates, one man, is worth one, $104 billion. Amanka Otega, the founder of Index Fashion, Spanish business magnet, is worth $75.8 billion. Comprad, the Swedish magnet who founded IKEA, uh, who is the richest, 10th richest person in the world, is worth $42 billion. Now, I just mentioned a few wealthy people that actually, if that wealth that is concentrated in the hands of a few people was to be fairly to be distributed in all the nations of the world who would not have poverty. The poverty that is there is following after the Babylonian system. You know, uh, people amassing wealth, even in Kenya. Uh, I, I, I was reading a paper some years back where you, uh, in this paper they were saying that almost 70% of the wealth of this country is, is, is like in, ten, in the hands of like 10% of the, of, 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 of the people. And quite a number of those people may not even be people that are coming from this land. You know? And then the rest of the people are left to be like, to live as paupers, to just survive. Because if you don't have money, you don't have a right. I mean, uh, the, the, the borrower is, um, is a what? Is a slave. Is a slave to the lender. You know, I, I, I'm going to share with you, even the, the banks, I mean, data, how did the banks begin? You know, banks began from Babylon. That, that is information that is not shared when people go to study banking. But when you study, when you go online and, uh, and Google, uh, Encyclopedia Botanica, I mean, uh, you read that book, it, it tells you about the genesis of the banks and how banks began in Babylon. How did banks begin in Babylon? Banks began uh, through temples. Because temples were having a lot of money. The Babylonians brought their best gold and silver. They brought it to the temples. And now temples were too rich. They were too wealthy. And now they wondered what are we going to use the money for. And so they decided uh, uh, that the money that we have, let, it be, let us begin to lend it to the people that are poor so that they can use it in agriculture. And when we give them the money, the farm belongs to the temple. So they harvest and then they pay back, but they must also give the Lord, uh, I mean the God of the temple, a certain amount of money as an offering because the money was borrowed from the temple. That is how the whole interest, uh, a philosophy of interest came about. You know, and when you look at how banks operate, mostly banks or, you know, the, the, the interest rates of banks are crazy. Like in our country, Kenya, I mean, you're getting a loan to buy a mortgage, to get, to get a mortgage, uh, uh, to, to get a house. I mean, <laughs> it is too expensive. You know, you put your money there and the interest they give you is very little. Very, very, very little. But when you borrow from them, my goodness. You know? So that, that, that's the whole thing. 
the whole thing is this. I'm not saying I'm, I'm fighting banks. I'm against banks. But, uh, you know, child of God, I think you can put your money in circles. There are many, uh, this kind of circles and so on. I mean, you, we need to know how to invest wisely. You know, it doesn't pay for you to just put your money, millions, uh, uh, that money to lie idle in the bank. You know, uh, with the interest they are giving you, it is just peanuts. So, uh, the, 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 that's the system of Babylon. It is a system. Let's look at the book of Daniel, chapter 4 and verse 22. It's thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. God has... Uh, now, uh, Daniel was, was interpreting the dream for for King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he, he could not be able to interpret it. But uh, in this dream, the Lord was showing him because Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. And Babylon at that time became a superpower. It became so powerful that their dominion basically touched every known, uh, the known world at that time. And, uh, you know, and that has always been the, 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 the ambition of Babylon. Now, Babylon is not here today. The nation called Babylon no longer exists. Uh, most likely it is where Iraq is. But the system, the way it operated at that time is so much uh, in force. It is operating. It is affecting people's lives as we're going to be looking at it in the teaching of this week that you don't need to miss because Babylon affects you. Babylon affects me. Babylon affects our nations. Babylon affects the church. Babylon affects our people in the church. They cannot shine until they learn the biblical strategies of conquering the Babylonian system because we have people and we are going to examine the people who conquered Babylon, people like Abraham, people like Daniel, people like uh, King Cyrus. Uh, there's another king, actually, I'd never seen that one, but as we were going through the Bible, you know, we've been doing the, the 40 chapters of the Bible every day, which we finished on, on Sunday, going through the Bible for one month. I came across that king whom I'd never given attention to. He also conquered Babylon, but actually, when I looked, he also used the same approach. And God wants to empower you to be able to prevail in the midst of Babylon, because as I have said, this is the season and the time for the righteous to rise up. The wicked are going to go down and the righteous are going to shine. I can tell you that as we come out of COVID, revival is going to break out. I said yesterday, I prophesied that yesterday and I want to say this again, that there are thrones, there are presidents, there are prime ministers, there are people in power that are not going to survive through this shaking that is coming over nations. There are people that God is lifting up and bringing in places of influence and others is going to throw them out. And uh, you will be part of those people that are coming in in the name of Jesus. Okay. So, uh, let's go to... Okay. So, uh, let's look at uh, how Babylon has affected our world. Let's go to the book of uh, Daniel, chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Okay. And the king spoke unto Ashpenazi, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed, and of the princesses, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So, point number one, I've told you, Babylon controls the world resources jobs tenders two babylon captures the intellectuals of our society when the babylonians came 
to, uh, to Israel. What were the kind of people that they took from Israel? They took, we can just see what, you know, the, 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 the definition that is given here. People that were skillful, they had wisdom, they were cunning in knowledge. In other words, these were architects, they were engineers, they were people that had creativity inside them. All were taken. And uh, uh, people that were understanding science. All the researchers that were there in Israel that would have discovered the vaccines of, uh, of, of HIV, of Ebola, of COVID-19 and everything taken by Babylon. You know? Babylon took them. So, you find that today, look at the church, look at the church today. Go to any church and go to any Freemasonic temple. <laughs> okay, let's look at Kenya. <laughs> Who are the people? Where do the doctors the lawyers, the members of parliament, the senators, the richest people in our city and in our nation, where do they go to church? I can tell you, you're not going to find them in the church. You'll find them in the temples. You'll find them in the Freemasonry. You'll find them in, in these other places in witchcraft, in sorcery, but you will not find them in the house of God. Now, what, 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 what is the impact of such a, such a system? And this is, one of the, this is one of the things that troubled my mind so much, and at times I, 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 I couldn't understand, because uh, Africa, Africa churches are growing, people are getting born again. People are coming to Christ. And uh, miracles are happening. Church in Africa is prayerful. People really pray. God has released such a grace and a fire, an anointing of prayer on the African continent. And I think because of uh, the suffering that this continent has gone through. But then, when you look, you find that don't we have many Christians who are in government, are they in parliament, they're in senate? Um, uh, 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 I mean, not so many, but a few who are there. You find that Africa is the most corrupt. You know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what position we are now, uh, you know, in Kenya, but you find that uh, in many countries that are leading on the ladder of corruption. When you look at the corruption index in nations, most of them are coming from the continent of Africa. You know? And uh, th that is something that has always troubled in my heart why we are not seeing so much uh, national transformation taking place in our nations. But then, and that was last year, then the Lord began to make me to understand Look at the kind of people that are in the church. Because if you're going to transform society, you need influence to transform society. So, you find that, don't we have many believers? How many members of parliament do we have? These are the people that make the policies. Senators, how many senators do you have that are born again? They are transformed they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And they understand their assignment and their mission why they went to parliament. How many business people, you know, power, I'm not talking about the, the mambogas and this, uh, you know, this small business. I'm talking about people that are having real influence in business that are born again. Because, so, because of that deficit, you find that, Though we are many people that are born again, there is no transformation in society. 
Because uh, uh, the people that are holding the places of influence, the shakers and the movers, they are not born again. They are wicked people. And our cousins, uh, especially the cousins, the cousins in this country, are how, what is the population of the cousins? They are only, I think, 15%. But I mean, the, when you look at the, the way they have positioned themselves, uh, uh, oh my goodness, they are major doors. If you want to see His Excellency the President, you want to see the DP, you, we, you know, one time we were just trying to examine in strategic areas, you find the cousins are there. Babylon has taken the intellectuals, most of the intellectuals. Most of the, the wealthy guys, they are not in the kingdom of God. This is the reason why in church, when we want to buy a microphone, how many people should contribute for the microphone? Eh? A microphone you can... <laughs> oh my goodness. 20 people have to contribute to buy a mic. You know, this is giving one dollar, this one is giving three, this one is giving two, this one is giving five, while to our, our cousins, one man builds a mosque. This king of Jordan, he died. I was with the king of Saudi Arabia, the king of Jordan, uh, who, who left a lot of money just for building of places of worship for their people. And that's why at one point you saw that even in Kenya, there was a flood of just building, especially at the coastal province, building up places of worship, even where there were no people. So, absolutely, actually, you find that many people that are in the church are just mostly average people. Average people. We are not having people at the top of the order. As I speak these things, some people may get offended. They may think I'm stepping on their toes, but we have to speak the truth. We have to arise and challenge the Babylonian system because the system has taken our policy makers. It has taken our senators. It has taken the people that have the wealth. I mean, uh, 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 and, and glory to God, we are in a season when God is speaking about wealth transfer. So Babylon has taken the the, 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 the most influential people in society. You're a pastor, you're watching me. Look at, I mean, look at, look at, look at the congregations. Look at where are these uh, major researchers going? Where is the edgy going? Where, where are those people going? That just by a sign of a signature, one signature can change so many things. Mm. Why are churches in a lockdown now? The churches cannot be able to meet. Who are the people who are making the policies? Isn't it the Babylonians who are regulating and saying you can only meet a hand with and for one hour? <laughs> okay. I know some people are getting annoyed. But um, three. <clears throat> the system of Babylon steals resources from the kingdom. It ensures that the kingdom of God is starved of resources. And how does that happen? By ensuring that the children, I mean the children of God, uh, okay, let me just read the scripture then I explain that. Second Kings chapter 24 and verse 13. And he carried out thence all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house, and he cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had said. David worked with all his might, gathered gold, steel, brass, copper, and everything that was needed, and his son Solomon built a very magnificent temple. When the Babylonians attacked, the first place where they went they went to the temple. They didn't go to people's houses. They, every time they attacked Israel, they first went to two places. The temple and the house of the king. Why? Because the children of Israel, they gave the best 
to the temple, to the building of the temple. Temple, the temple was so rich. The temple was so wealthy. It had a lot of money. Today, if you want to steal, can you think of going to steal in church? <laughs> you know, there is a saying, there is a saying that uh, as poor as a what? Yeah? People are hearing me. You finish it yourself. As poor as a what? As a church? <laughs> That is coming to an end in the name of Jesus. Because we are shaking the Babylonian Empire. You know, we are, are going to bring it down in our nation, even in Kenya. This is the season. It is the season. The, it is the season of heaven for the wealth transfer. What the Babylonians have worked for. So, when they came, they took the gold. They took the silver. That's why you find the churches... And when I talk about church, I'm talking about the church, but I'm also talking about you because you are a church. Okay? Point number four. The system leaves only the poor in the land. Look at um, uh, 2 Kings chapter 24 and verse 14. 2 Kings 24 and verse 14. And he carried it away. All Jerusalem and all the princesses and all the mighty men of Vela, even 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen and smiths, none remained. <laughs> I love the last statement. Save the poorest sort of the people of the land. Mm, that is King Nebuchadnezzar. He carried the richest guys that were in the land. They were all taken to Babylon. And what kind of people did he leave? The poor. The poor ones who don't have much. Those ones can stay in the land because they will not do much in the land to rebuild the nation of Israel. That was the whole philosophy. And even the, when the poor remained in the land, the little that they produced the Babylonians taxed them greatly. In some of the nations, when you look at the taxation system, is a retrogressive kind of uh, uh, of taxation. It is not progressive. I mean, it the poor. It is like if you are poor, you are taxed more. So you find that people in church. Most people in church, I know people, there are people in church, they want to support the work of God. They want to give, my goodness. At times I preach, I see people, people want to give, they really desire to give. They want, they want to do, they want to build churches. They want to, oh my goodness, one sister came and told me, really, really, Apostle, I feel so bad when you stand at times and you call for money for something and uh, the, you know, the, 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 we are not able, we, are, we can only raise very little money. I feel so, 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 so bad. That's what happens. And so, uh, because the people in, uh, in the house of God, financially, they are not very powerful. The work of God is, uh, is, is, is affected because the gospel is free, but the means to transmit the gospel, it costs money. You know? So, uh, it, this has been a, a deliberate strategy of the system of Babylon to fight against the kingdom of God, you know, ensure that churches, the, the, the people of God, they are struggling. People of God live like, like paupers. And you know, some of us, we are so much deceived by the devil to think that when we are poor, we are humble. You say, come on, uh, 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 when I was growing up, that, 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 that's the philosophy I had. You know, you are poor, you know, you are humble, so you're going to heaven. All that kind of thing. You know? It's not the will of God. It's not the plan of God. You know? 
Money resources are needed for what purpose? Uh, we, we, we are not talking about having money to be like Maria Antoinette, the wife of, uh, uh, of King Louis the 16th of France, who had about 300 pairs of shoes. And was one of the reasons why the French Re Revolution had to break out because the king had so much money and the people were poor. People could not afford to put bread on the table. And, you know, the, the king was living in another world. You, God needs to give you money so, as, for, for the purposes of the kingdom, for kingdom advancement. Child of God, your money is only important because it is connected to the purposes of God. If your money is not connected to the purposes of God, man, you know, uh, two days ago, I was just uh, meditating and just thinking about, about rapture, you know. And I was thinking and I was saying, wow, all these people that have so much money in the banks and they're just keeping it there and they are not connecting their resources to the, to, the, to the purposes of the kingdom of God. When rapture comes and they are taken to heaven, whom are they going to leave their money for? If they make it to go to heaven. They're going to leave it for <laughs> the Antichrist. <laughs> He's going to use it uh, to propagate his own, his own agendas. So, uh, the, the, the Babylonian system is robbing, is a fighting the children of God. I can tell you, uh, I, I, I pray with many I pray, and I can tell you it is a system, brothers and sisters. Business people, children of God who are doing business, they don't want to corrupt. You know? They, they, <clears throat> they are living a holy life. It is a very, very, Babylon has made it so difficult for you to break through in business. Because you want to get a tender, they tell you, you have to give some corruption. Otherwise, you're not going to get the tender. How many business people come to me to pray for them? They, are, they have applied for the tender. They have given the best prices. But then they are told, okay, what you have given, you're going to provide at this, but you have to put the price at this. And then the money on top is going to be your money. As a child of God, you cannot do that. You find that in our city in Nairobi, even in Kenya, you find that certain businesses <laughs> you cannot just enter them easily. No matter, you know, at one time uh, I, I went to I went to, I was in the nation of Canada and um, I met some business people. I'd gone to speak for Dr. Pat Francis and so these business people were from uh, they were from South Africa. And so uh, when they knew that I come from Kenya, they said, wow, we are so happy to meet with you, Kenya. Da, 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 da. We really want to import tea from Kenya. We have an already market in South Africa. We deal in tea, and, and Kenyan tea is very good tea. It is needed. So, Pastor Subi, please, when you go back, try to work out to ensure that, you know, uh, and we, we, we want to deal with, you know, with Christians uh, because we want to buy tea from Christians because we, we want to do it also as a ministry because when we buy tea from you, then the kingdom of God will be able to benefit. So I came back, I sat down with some of our business, um, business people in church and they said, Let, come on, let's register a company to export tea to South Africa. You're talking about uh, something like 2015 up to today. We have never gotten the certificate. They have taken us round and round and round and round and oh my goodness, Babylon. <laughs> you go there today, they tell you we need this, we need this, we need this. Okay, you go again, again. I mean the same thing. Children of God are struggling in business. Why? Because you, you can't corrupt. You know, you a friend of mine went to, went to China and uh, he decided to, you know, he saw the, these screens, the, 
you know, television screens are this uh, new generation, what is it called? I'm forgetting it. Uh, these new generation screens, I mean, very nice screens. So he descended, oh my goodness. He, he came back, he checked the prices around. Yeah, uh, that, that was in Uganda. The, the prices in Uganda, the, the screens were so high. So he went back to China, loaded containers of televisions and brought them to Uganda. And because the Babylonian system, they have people at the ports. They have people in the revenue authorities. So for you, when you bring your product, you know, they don't want you to get into that market. What do they do? They lower the prices. It is your first time to do business. You know, they have systems, and this happens all over Africa, where you find that for them, they don't pay tax. So they are able to bring goods from China, bring them into Kenya, take them to Uganda, take them to Nigeria. They are not paying tax, and so they are able to sell their goods at a lower price. For you, you are paying tax. You are doing everything. Definitely, your product is going to be higher. So they heard that this uh, uh, friend of mine had brought the television screens. They manu manipulated. First of all, they delayed clearing his, his um his televisions. It took months. By the time he cleared the prices in Uganda for the, for the television screens, it was at the same price with what he bought in China. He made his loss, never went back to that business, and then the prices went up again. Child of God, it is a wicked system. And it is time that as intercessors, we have to arise and break this system of Babylon from our nations. Because I know what brings down Babylon. It is spiritual warfare. It is spiritual warfare. Abraham challenged it. We shall be looking at that in my next uh, series of teachings. You know? I mean, look at you, a sister. You are working in a company. You work so hard. You are so committed. You are so honest. But you will not get a promotion because you refuse to sleep with the boss. That is how Babylon operates. For you to be promoted, you must sleep around with the CEO. You must go to bed with the manager. And for you, you are born again. You say, no, I'm not going to do it. So, you stay on the same level. I've seen many children of God, and unfortunately, certain children of God are not able to take the pressure. So, they end up compromising. We should not compromise. We have to stand on the truth. When the devil closes one door, God will open up ten doors for you. I listened to... Um, a testimony given by one of our brothers, uh, Ezekiel Mutua, uh, who has been able to stand in Babylon and he has stood on righteousness, how he was working in, uh, in one of the leading uh, um, media houses here and he came up with a story and they told him you, you, that story cannot be printed and he said it has to be printed and he, they, they said it cannot be printed and, and so he, he had to be forced to resign from the work. But that door closed, but God opened doors for him. He's now operating at a higher level than where he would have been, you know, in terms of remuneration and everything. So, child of God, what, what, what I'm saying is we need to stand on righteousness. So, you, you find that uh, um, people cannot compromise at the places of work. You cannot corrupt. You don't want to, you cannot bribe. You cannot sleep around with somebody. Uh, you're working in an office and they look at you as a fool because everybody is stealing but for you saying I'm righteous I think I need to come to an end uh, I'm going to be beginning from there tomorrow I was just giving you a background and how Babylon affects affects the nations okay let me finish with this last point and then the children of Israel 
was supposed to employ the Babylonians. Israel, God, you read Deuteronomy chapter 28. God said what? You will never borrow. You will only lend to nations. You will never be you'll what? You'll be the head and not the what? Huh? You'll be the head and not the tail. Yeah. You'll be the first and not the last. That was the destiny of Israel. And you that is watching me, you are a spiritual Jew. But what has happened? How many children of God that do we have that are doing businesses and they are employing? Most of us are employed by Babylonians. Yeah, it's the Babylonians who are employing us. It is Isaac who is supposed to employ Ishmael. But today, it is Ishmael who is employing Isaac. And it is Ishmael determining and deciding. And actually, at times the Jews complain, they say that God gave them the covenant, but he gave the wealth to Ishmael. There's a lot of contradictions. This end time church must have influence in the marketplace. This end time church must have influence in business. There is no way that we're going to see transformation coming in the mountain of, of business, in the mountain of media, in the mountain of politics if our people are not and on the top of the ladders of those mountains. And this is why the Lord spoke to me, was it maybe five years ago or three years ago? I wrote that in my book, The Governmental Anointing. One of the reasons why even the gospel, which has taken so long for the gospel to reach out to the world, was because the gospel began from down going up. God is now changing the strategy. The gospel is going to touch the kings, the presidents, the prime ministers. Because once one influential person is touched, a shift comes so easily in a nation. Let's pray as we come to the end of that. We are going to be continuing about the Babylonian system tomorrow. And I, I believe that we're going to have a very, very, very powerful time in the name of Jesus Christ. Mashana Magadai. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, Roshaka Bosaka Raba, Rema Sekere Bejanda, Maroshaka Tarabazanda Bagarai, Maroshaka Boseke Brekatai, Maroshaka Tarabasoko Yabagarai, Roko Seke Terebeshaka Bragarai, Marosha Maka Boseke Brekatai, Maseke Rebeshaka Tai. Rando shaka raba baba baba ba masaka tara bashata rosha katara mayando robozanda ya marosha kabo seke brigadaya child of god pray against the babylonian system that will not prevail over your life in the name of jesus makashaka ramayando ziketeza masaka masoko torobashata marose ketere beshaka taya marosa magadaya Mashata basoko torobushanda, rema seke terebeshata rabazanda, roseke terebezende rebeanda rabazanda, makabo seke brekataya, rosha kataya, masoko torobushaka yabagaraya, mare seke terebezanda rabagados, rosa makata yabagaraya, mako seke rebeshanda bagaraya, rema koseke terebeshanda bagaraya. Masoko toro boshanda, rema seke tere boshanda bagaraya, maseke tere boshata na bagaraya, roseke reme yanda mama mama, makabo seke brakatawa, masaka raba, romo shanda bakataya, mako brakataya, rosha magaraya, maro seke tere boshanda bagaraya. Oh my God, maseke bagabando zagaraya. Marosha katara bazanda bagaraya, baseke reme yanda sakataya rabagaraya, roseke tere besanda rabagaraya, maseke boseke brekataya, marosha magaraya rabagandos, 
Oh my God. Zakaya Bagadaya. Somebody pray against Babylon in the name of Jesus. Makamoseke break at higher. Roshama Gadaya. Masaka Boseke break at higher. Roshaka Talabasaka Taya. Maseke Terebezende Rebezende. Romosaka Rama Gadaya. Rende Seke Brekato Zamagadaya. Masana Makata Rabayando Robozendi. Romo Shaka Boseke Yabagadaya. Babylon will not take the wealth. It will not take the business opportunities. Marco Shama Kataya. We are not going to remain with the cramps in the church. Reba Ziande Rebekando Zamagadaya. Masana Bagadaya. Roshama Gadaya. Roseke Terebezende Rebe. Rema Shana Bagadaya. Basoko Romo Shana Bagadaya. Mare Basoko Turbo Shana Bagadaya. Manese Ketere Shana Rabagadaya. Romo Saka Bakato Zamagadaya. Rema Kose Kebre Kataya. Mando Saka Taya. Makabo Saka. Masoko Taya. Makobre Kataya. Makobre Kataya. Rosha Magadaya. Bakabo Siandi. Rema Kabre Kataya. Mando Shama Kataya. Basse Kebre Atoza. Rema Sakayama Yandos. Rosha Kabo Zegedea. Rema Sekebe Katoza Magadaya. Babylon will not take over our nations. Babylon will not take over our cities. It is time for the righteous to arise. It is time for the righteous to arise. Marosha Bagadaya. Re Katanamayando Rubusete. Mareke Besa Katanamayando Zete. Bayando Shamagadozo Roboyandi. Makabo seke break at higher. Mando samakato zeyande. Bakabo zagadaya. We call, we call the intellectuals to come to the kingdom of God. We lose, we lose them, we lose them. The cartels, the networks of Babylon. We arise against them at their places of work, in business, in media. You will not control society. Maro shamagadaya. Mando seke terebeshana bagadaya. Roseke boseko yamagadaya. Mando shankatana mayanda rabagadaya. Rema soko tolobosana wagadoza. Rema kapo seke terebeshana wagadaya. Masaka romoyanda. Romo seke terebeshana. Rema kapo seke brekadoza. Rosha magadaya. Mando shamagadaya. Roseke terebezendi. Mande seke terebeshana wagadaya. Rosha magadaya. Romo seke terebeshana wagadaya. Marosha magadaya. Rema sokotea. Rema kataya. We frustrate the sorcery, the witchcraft of Babylon, the corruption in Babylon. We frustrate it. We stop it. We break it. Mashana makataya. Remama mama masia teri besako zataya. Bando shamagadaya. Child of God, pray this seriously. You are doing business. You are not going to compromise. But God is fighting for you. God is fighting for your company. God is fighting for your business. God is shaking the Babylonians in the name of Jesus. This is the time for Babylon to come down. Babylon to come down. The habitation of demons. Babylon, the system to come down. You will shine. You will prosper in the name of Jesus. Marosha maka bose kebrek atai. Mande se ketere bezende. Mako so kobre kato zamagadia. Rosha la bagara 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 bagara. Masana magadaya. Father, deal with Babylon in our government. Deal with Babylon in our economy. Deal with Babylon in our media. Deal with Babylon in our business. In, a, in the business sphere. Deal with Babylon. Deal with Babylon, my God. Shake Babylon. Shama kapo seke bregadai. Rama kapo seke bregadai. Roshama kapo zanda yamakatos. Rema kapo seke bregata la bazanda. Marosha kapo seke bregatoza. Ma kapo seke bregatai. Marosha kata rabayanda. Baseke tere bezanda. Father, we thank you. And Lord, we bless you 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, we are going to continue on this teaching tomorrow. And on Friday, we are going to have powerful uh, apostolic prayer. Because I realized something as I studied the word of God. Only one man conquered Babylon without an army. And that was Daniel. The rest of the people, they all had armies. It takes spiritual warfare to bring down Babylon. You know? And we are going to uh, do that. Because there's, uh, Babylon uses a sorcery. Sorcery. <laughs> Sorcery is so much in Babylon. You know, it's the children of God who do not understand that they need to have powerful, active altars. Look at the people you're working with. Most of those people, they all have witchcraft. They all have sorcery. They put it under their chairs. They put it on the doors. They put it on the windows. They are connected to some spiritual energy somewhere. And that's why, you know, uh, you, when you go, especially to, to, I mean, you go to India, you go to Asia, uh, because there you, 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 you can see, you know, the African witchcraft is always hidden. Africans you hide it in their waists, in, in their shoes, they put it under the chairs. You know, I, when I went to Asia, I go to offices to pray for people. There's something called fungusoi. You, you, I mean, they do their thing. It is there. Somebody has an altar in the office and you enter there and you know this is an altar. But the born again children of God who have the most powerful altars, they pray at home, they pray in church. There is nothing in the marketplace. Yeah? This week you that is watching me, we want to raise up a marketplace altar at your place of work. <clears throat> yeah, we are going to raise it online. You have to raise an altar in that office so that angels can come there. Because listen, how altars work. You raise a personal altar, God will speak to you on a personal level. You raise a church altar, God speaks to you about the church. You raise a national altar, God speaks to you about your nation. You raise a family altar, God's, because an altar becomes a platform through which God transacts with you. So you raise an altar at your place of work. And that's now, that's what we were supposed to be doing this year to infuse companies, banks in this city of Nairobi with the altars. Marketplace transformational altars. And we shall see how the Babylonians will take the city. Let's give our offerings. And please send in your prayer requests. Everything is there online. Uh, and uh, we are going to be meeting in, at 7 o'clock for the youth uh, service. Father, we thank you. Bless us as we give our offerings. Bless your people. Prosper them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And we believe. Amen, 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 amen.